Generic greetings, Gloomhaven is somewhat of a legend in the board gaming world, a sprawling epic dungeon crawler without compare. It's rated number one on Board Game Geek, not just for overall but also for thematic and strategy together. A behemoth of a box weighing in at approximately 10 kilos and is something that will set you back around about the 140 generic units of currency mark. That's assuming you can even find a copy in the first place you understand and that's also before you factor in the card protectors and sleeves as well as the almost mandatory box insert which will actually allow you to set up and tear the game down and still have enough time to play the darn thing in one evening. However, assuming you can get over that fairly high barrier for entry, hopefully many many hours of adventuring goodness will be had. As someone who has um, had the board game for about a year now, I bought my third printing, yeah about a year now, I've been playing it pretty much once a week with three other friends co-op for about a year which means we've done about 40 odd missions and I can honestly say it's risen to become one of my all time favourite board games ever, all time, etc. If someone were to ask me what is my most played board game, it would be between Gloomhaven, um, Battlestar Galactica board game and Imperial Assault. However, the latter two I've owned and played for years, so this is a very, very quickly catching up. If someone were to ask me what's my favourite, it would be between Gloomhaven, Battlestar Galactica board game and Galaxy Trucker. And in terms of sort of cost per mile, like how many hours I've got out of it and for how much I've paid for it, Gloomhaven, I would assume, is beyond, I assume be near the top, even though uh, it's a fairly high cost and uh, a very big initial outlay because I've played it so much, then the actual cost per hour is fairly low. But either way, what's that got to do with this? Well, um, nothing much. I just wanted to give you some perspective. <laughs> By the way, today's beverage is a nice cup of green tea. So if you're wanting the, if you're wanting basically the tabletop version, but ported over to PC, prepare to be utterly disappointed at the moment, but I'll get onto that in just a little while. So this is the digital edition on PC. You can see it does say early access build at the top, and that's sort of the crux of the matter there when it comes to disappointed at the moment, but again, we'll uh, touch on that in a moment. Um, so this has been out about four days as of the time of recording, and I've played about five hours now, so I guess still a first impressions, but I've got most of it down and been a fairly... Um, being a veteran of the board game and uh, fairly well versed with that, I think I can, uh, I think I'll be all right in going through and showing you pretty much how the game is like and what it plays like and all that sort of thing, and then you can decide whether it's something for yourself or not. So first things first, you can see that on the front here, it just says tutorial, campaign, adventure, multiplayer, modding, and the top and bottom two are locked, and that is a little bit of a problem at the moment. There's only like a sort of semi-random adventure mode at the moment, but the the actual moment-to-moment -moment play is pretty much identical to the board game. But if you're wanting the board game, so or playing with friends and unlocking stuff and also doing things like getting perks and um, getting Gloomhaven's prosperity leveled up and unlocking different characters and all that sort of thing, then that's just not in the game at the moment. It is planned and there is a full uh, roadmap of what they're planning. Links in the description as always so you can check it out yourself. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to show you what's in at the moment and uh, I'll show you the moment to moment play. Um, I don't know obviously if you've played the board game or not. I'm going to assume that you haven't, although I know a lot of veterans will have come over from the board game to this, uh, but it's best just to go through it. It's See what it's like. So let's go to adventure and we will load in. So the way the adventure mode works at the moment is you select a party. You can see when you say change party there. So it goes from two heroes, three heroes and four heroes. However, these are unlocked by defeating bosses. So I haven't done that just yet. And there's four characters currently in the game. When you play the board game for the first time, you have between five, uh, you have six classes that you can play. You've got the Spellweaver, the Brute, the Craghart, uh, uh, the Scoundrel, Mind Thief and uh, Tinkerer? I think, um, and each of them have their own set of abilities and decks, and I'll touch more of that when we're actually in the game, uh, and also you get some equipment as well, but in the, at the moment, basically you, you get a party, so you get a party like this here, and then you gain a certain number of equipment, and then you go through and fight, and you level up and unlock different cards, but there's no... Um, for those who have played the game, essentially you get uh, there's no there's no X cards. So normally when you build your deck, so this uh, spell weaver here, which is sort of a ice magey type thing, she has eight cards total in her deck, and you be normally be able to build that from these cards as well as some other optional cards. At the moment you can't do that; it's just you get these, but you do unlock cards as you progress on. So anyway, we've got some equipment, we've got some um, we've got some cards in our hand. I'll go through that when we're actually in the game. Our objective is to uh, well, current objective is bandit commander which has Undead Commander and uh, High Cultist, but we're not there just yet. We do have some equipment, so we've got some Boots of Striding, we've got some Healing Potions, we have some overall levels here and also the gold that we have, but um, I think we're just going to best jump in and um, 
see what we can do. So I've completed one sort of walk over to here, and we've got three options. We can either go for Journey to Eagle Crest, we've got a Journey to Weirwand, and we've got one same journey to curse keep that is difficulty easy with the one scenario length but also reward is three gold and six experience and a minor healing portion but and you can see there's better rewards from here, but I'm going to do the easy one just to show you what it is like. So we'll start our journey, and you can see the armory's in the middle there. When we mouse over, and we see on the right-hand side, we're going to encounter bandit guards and bandit archers. Now, in the tabletop game, I think there's 16, about 16 characters and many, many, many enemies. Now, those aren't in. Again, it's uh, there's only a small selection at the moment, but they do plan on adding all of them uh, in the future. But let's go over to the armory, and let's see if we get a road event. So, uh, yes, we have got an encounter. So we have encountered some you discover an old well at the side of the road, some folk believe it's dropping some coins in will grant luck. I'm going to toss some coins in, lose 10 gold. You're feeling blessed, uh, journey on. So we've lost 10 gold, but we have gained blessed, which is uh, a very good thing for us. Blessed means we can do double damage when we draw that card. Anyway, let's go to adventure, and it will load in to our, like I say, randomly generated dungeon. So... And there's our blessed going off straight away. Um, I must confess, it's a decent looking game. I do like the uh, attention to detail and like the floor scatter and the animations are pretty fairly cool. Um, there's not much music to be uh, <laughs> to listen to or anything like that. It's um, fairly sort of um, limped in that area, but uh, yeah, it's it, I can't say it's a bad looking game, and it certainly does um, bring to life the board game at least. Uh, I think so. Anyway, we can see we have uh, four enemies here, and they are all standing around. Now, the way this works is that you will play two cards, and then when it comes to your turn, you will do one of the actions on those cards. So we are currently selected on the brute here on the left-hand side, and it says zero of two. We do need to select two cards. Um, on the top, we have our initiative tracker. Currently, we don't have anything because we haven't played our cards for initiative. Shows the objective on the right-hand side, kill all enemies. This is where we've got our um, elemental infusion. I'll touch on that later. On the left, we've got our equipment as well as what cards are in our hand, and I'll come on to that when we do attacking. So, when it comes to the placement of cards, I can just say select two there. The first one that we select becomes our initiative card, so initiative 18, it goes from lowest to highest initiative. Um, and when it's your turn, you will play the cards in any order you like. So even though this is your initiative card, you don't have to play that as your first card. But when you, once you play a card, you will do either the top or bottom action. In general, this is a very broad generalization, the top stuff is like sort of attacking and buffing, bottom one is movement and again some buffing. They can go, buff can really go on either one but it's normally attack on the top movement on the bottom that is like say a very broad generalization uh, you can also play the card for either what it says here or for just the um, the sub action here which is either two attack or two movement we're gonna look at here and we can see that there's um, a few enemies around here what I want to do is I want to probably get this archer pushed into that trap there if I hold alt you can see all of the cards in our hand uh, if I hold tab however we can also see the enemies and some really really small text for bandit guard one bandit archer etc <laughs> when you mouse over the enemies you do get a, a tile on the right there to show you their health their movement, their attack, and their range. So the bandit archer here has a health of four, uh, four out of four. Obviously, when it goes to zero, they fall down dead. Uh, movement two, attack two, and range three. So if they draw an attack card, which they draws their draw theirs uh, randomly, then they could probably attack at range. But I want to push them into that trap, which is a damage trap two. So I do have uh, a move three, push one, which would be because could go one, two, and then push them to there. That would be fairly decent, I think. Um, I'll probably want two to there. That would be better. Um, and then I can go for... Do I have Retaliate? I do have Retaliate. So I'm going to play Eye for an Eye, and then I'm going to go down to uh, this bottom one here, which is Sweeping Blow. So that'll do quite nicely, and I'll move into there. For the other character, the Spell Weaver, we can see we've got all manner of stuff, and the Spell Weaver is a bit different from other characters, because when you play a card, I'll go back here, you can see that um, there's no symbols on the bottom right for that one, and not for that one, but if, for this one here, you can see there's a symbol there, that means burn, so that basically goes into like a lost pile, and you can't get that back for the rest of the game. When you play a card, they basically go into like a, a used pile, and you can get them back either by long resting or short resting, or sometimes by potions and other equipment. For the Spellweaver, however, they've got a lot of stuff here, which is Burn. However, they are one of the few characters that have Recover All of Your Lost Cards, and that one means removed from game. You're not going to get it back for this entire, uh, <laughs> entire scenario. So what I want to do is probably go probably go and um, do as much damage as I can and um, then sort of 
pull all them cards back to my hand. I do have an attack three, range three card. However, they are not... Uh, there's one, two, three. There's only three in range. Um, if I do that, that would actually be quite good, though. And a one, two, three, one, two, three. There's only two of them in range, so one of those would be wasted. But I am going to pop that. I'm going to use the fire orbs. And I'm also going to go for frost down, which is on the bottom. Next two sources of damage, suffer no damage instead. And I'll actually redo that so we get... Make sure we do that one first. The problem with this is that if I do it now, this is where we have to go for card on economy and initiative. We can see that the uh, the um, the Brute will go before me, which means I push them out of the way, which means I'd only be doing one attack. So that's actually going to be pretty much wasted for the Fire Orb. So I don't think I'm going to do that at all. Um, one, two, three, four. Um, I could do Impaling Eruption, which is additionally target all enemies on the path to the primary target, which should hopefully damage these two. So let's try that. We'll give it a go. We'll give it a go. We don't know if it'll work, but um, yeah, here we go. So end selection, you can see their cards that they've drawn. So the Bandit Archer has got move one, attack three, range three. The Bandit Elite Guard has got move 1, attack 4, and the Bandit Guard move 1, attack 3. Um, the Guard, well, anything that's Elite, they are just generally a better version of the standard ones, and they do the same action, they just do it better. So look, they continue here, we're now on to initiative order. So you can see the cards that I've played on the left-hand side, and it does very smartly uh, highlight when you mouse over what you're going to play. So... Um, I can do the top action on one and the bottom on the other, or the other way around. It doesn't really matter, but you can't do, say, double top or double bottom. It doesn't work. And yes, uh, there will be a time, I'm sure, throughout this video <laughs> where I will try to play two cards to do the top action or the bottom. And it's happened many a time in the tabletop version. And I don't really want to talk about it if that's okay with you. So I'm going to use move three, push one. So I'm going to say move two there. I think that would be acceptable. And then we'll move along. You can see we're going to go forward. And then I'm going to skip the rest of that movement. But then I'm going to say push and I'll push them into that trap. And there we go. So they'll suffer two damage on that trap. And it gets rid of the trap as well, which is always good. My other action will be to retaliate and I'm going to activate that and that is again one experience for each time you retaliate retaliate is when you get hit um, they suffer uh, two damage back suffer is the key element there not like it's not an attack roll back it's just they take it regardless of whatever buffs or shields they've got so we can see that the bandit archer is going to move and then attack and the guard's going to move and then attack so the way they focus is it's the closest enemy and then they'll do that thing uh, there are some caveats to that they will sort of move move further if you they can get multiple targets hit if they've got ta extra targets but at the moment they don't so I'm not too worried about it. Let me just end that turn and you can see we've now got my character here. So if I did that, uh, would, would we be able to do that? No, you can see that it will sadly, it's not going to work out as I intended. Um, what I'm going to do then is actually attack that archer so I'll attack those and then I will confirm the attack. Now the way the attack works is that you will do whatever it is on here, which is attack three. You will then add any positives or negatives that you have. So you might get like an additional plus one for poison or something like that. And then you will draw a random card, which is over on the left hand side here. Um, so you've got 20 cards in your deck as standard. You've got a, a, a botch, so you do no damage. You've got a times two, and then you've got several cards ranging from minus two up to plus two. And you can see there's little dots under each of the numbers there see how many you have we've also got uh, additional three times twos because we were blessed so um that's pretty good so let's just go for um that attack there and we will see what we get and you can see up here what we've rolled um now this is something that i don't like and i do i think does need to be improved you don't have as far as i can tell anywhere to get like an event log to see what was rolled and what was picked uh, what was drawn sorry and also the uh, damage numbers and what you've hit are very very small and you can easily miss them and they move quite quickly and i just think that's it's not that readable I mean uh, especially for new people as well and I should also point out that yes there is a compendium here and it is fairly functional it's pretty much just a carbon copy over from the game for a lot of the symbols are even uh, these the same which I very much approve of however because there's no tutorial mmm yeah don't like that at all I think at a minimum there should have been a the tutorial to come with it but um, anyway so we're gonna buff ourselves with this here so next two sorts of damage we suffer nothing instead and I think that will do us for our turn so now it's gonna be their turn so the bandit arch is gonna fire at me again you can see they did draw some there but it's it doesn't really show I'm going to either well I can either burn a card to not take any damage or receive the three I'll receive the three because we've got nine so they're gonna hit me for ooh, four damage that's painful I'm gonna receive that damage again uh, but they do suffer two back and then their other card is going to come along. Hit me for minus one, so it's two damage. So I'm already down to a total of three health. That's not good. Um, 
let's end the round and then we're back to normal so what i'm going to do is go very very early indeed so i'm going to go for provoking raw and probably use the attack there to disarm which means they can't attack and then i'm going to go for warden uh, warding strength which gives us shield for four turns and also neck my potion for this character i'm going to do the bottom action where is it uh, freezing nova which is heal four and i will heal that character there and then I will probably do Mana Bolt, and I'll swap them around so we get to the higher initiative. So we'll end the selection there. They've got 14 and 50, so there we go. Um, and I will continue that one. So first things first, we're going to heal four. So here we are. This is a burn card, but remember this character can get them back. As you can see, the uh, effects are actually quite nice, and the lighting as well is pretty good. Let's go for this attack, but we can also empower the attack by using an element. So we're going to use um, probably uh, Frost. It doesn't really matter. You can see I've got our elements uh, track on the right here. You infuse the elements. I think there's six elements in total. It's like light, dark, earth. Uh, wind, fire, water, heart, go planet. No, there's not that last bit. Um, so you've just got those elements. They are fully empowered, then they go to waning, then they go to just not empowered at all. But we're going to use that to give ourselves plus one attack at uh, one experience, so that's good. And we're going to be three attack at range three, and we will do that, and we will attack um, probably that guard there, because hopefully we're going to kill it. Yep, yeah, we rolled a plus zero, so no negative, and there they go. They're now killed. Excellent. And they'll drop some cash as well. I will not activate anything, because we don't need to, and we'll end the turn. Now it's down this character. First things first, we'll neck our portion, glug glug. Although you don't get that, you just get this, <laughs> yeah, the same animation as healing. Uh, we're going to go for this uh, next source of damage, uh, the sixth next source of damage um, from attacks, targeting you, gain shield. And now I'm going to hit this person in the face with a big sword. And um, no, I won't. I will actually stab them and they're also disarmed, which means they can't attack. So when it comes to them, uh, they're probably not going to attack. Archers fired at me and uh, only done a bit of damage by the look of it. I can't remember what, I, can't, I didn't see what they're drawn, I can't even check. They've also now created a trap. So end round, um, what can we do then? Well, I think we could probably go ahead and... Um well, ideally, I want to get rid of that trap, and I also want to get this guy killed. So, is, can we do that in all in one go? Well, we do have this move three push, but we'd have to move to there, because the push has to be away. Then it'll move to there. Is there any point in that, or do we just hit him really hard? Um, well, I'm not really too sure. Um, we could do spare dagger, which would probably do what I want, but the problem is I'd be down here and then I'd have to keep moving forward, you see. Um, you can see now that we have used some cards, these are sort of discarded here. If I go over here, you can see we've got discarded and the burnt cards as well. Like Once again, you can hold your uh, alt key and you can see the cards here. So these ones here are burnt, this one is um, discarded. This one is currently, it's technically is discarded, but also currently in play. Um, I only know that because of, we know we played it last turn, about two sources of damage, and it's still in play. It also goes at the top there. Um, it would be nice if it was highlighted slightly differently. Again, it's just little niggles like that keep popping up about the readability of things. And especially for new players as well. I think veterans would probably be okay with it, but um, for new ones, not, not so much. Anyway, I digress. So we're going to go with probably a probably we could do that which is leaping and we'll leap over to there and get that gold and then hit that archer um do i want to do that i sort of do um although doing that would mean that this person would technically be equidistant from these characters which means they would go for the target that has the least initiative so if that goes first then yeah that might actually work okay let's try and be clever let's go for le leaping and then we'll go for um i think spare dagger we're going to swap those around actually spare dagger is a really good card because it's attack ranged on the top which range for this character you don't get much and also attack on the bottom which is unorthodox as well okay so for this character we've got um, all manner of things we can go for flame orbs flame strike uh, probably flame strike and then we'll say move i think that's okay and then we'll end that turn so 31 on the band archer 35 on them so that's actually really bad because um actually no it might still work out we'll have to see so for this character we will go there we will be jumping and for whatever reason there's always this little micro stutter when you do uh, certain movement actions i've noticed it and we'll see if it uh, continues on through the rest of it let's skip the rest of that and then we're going to do ranged and we will do ranged on I know this is a problem. If I target this character here, we are attacking at what's called disadvantage, which means essentially we would draw two of these cards and pick the worst. And the reason we're at disadvantage is because any ranged attacks uh, adjacent to an enemy is at disadvantage. So instead we're going to fling it at this guy and we've drawn a zero anyway, so we've caused no damage, which is really bad. So 
Bandit Archer is going to move to attack two range through. So they're almost certainly going to move there and attack. Um, that's if it's following standard board game logic. Uh, the reason for that, the reason it's for its movement is because it doesn't want to be at disadvantage. For this guy, it will move one attack three uh, range two. Ah, so that actually is just going to stand there and fling a thing at me. So this has all gone bad. Um, I flicked up my gold and I've received two damage. I'll just take the two damage. And this person's also going to fling a dagger at me and I'll take the three damage. And this is starting to hurt. Okay, so. So we want to get maybe fire orbs now? I think so. Let's see if I can get these two kills. So we're going to target those two, confirm the targets, and we've drawn a minus two for the first one, and then a plus one for the next one, so four damage and killed it. So it worked out. Then our next one is to cause two damage to this. I'm hoping we can kill them. No, we've drawn a zero, so it's only caused two damage. But then we're going to end that turn, and then that'll be us. So end of round back to the top so um i have a lot of cards here that are discarded but i want to probably get some more health but i don't know if i can do it and i've only got one two three four cards so essentially i've only got two turns before i either do a long rest which means i heal and get some cards back or i do a short rest and randomly discard one of these i think we're going to try and get this person killed um, and I don't know the best way of going about doing that. Or do I go through this door and uh, see what's in the next one? I think I'm going to do that and let the spell weaver deal with him. So we're going to go with uh, Overwhelming Assault, which is move three, push two. And then we're going to go for a shield bash and try and absolutely wipe out whatever's in front of us. For this person, we've only got two cards left, so we don't really have much of a choice. We're going to go with Ride the Wind, which is uh, move eight but discard. And then we'll actually recover all of our cards so we'll do that and um, this person will probably go before us though which means they're gonna get hit and also I'm very well aware that I'm leaving this person behind which could come back to bite me but anyway um, we've only got is that two rooms left I think so um, so let's go for um, that we'll confirm that they're on 55 so they're gonna move towards me and hit me and that's gonna be all kinds of painful right anyway so we're gonna do this one here which is move and we'll move to there actually what we'll do we'll activate do we need to activate our boots of striding I don't think we need to we'll move to there first and um, I'm actually going to go over to. I'm going to go over to there. Um, I don't need to activate the Boots of Striding. And then I'm just going to do Stun Attack on this person. We've done double damage, so it's 8 damage in total. Absolutely cleaned that person right out. Um. Oh, yes, there is a door in there. <laughs> um, you, yeah, if you, like, lose sight of a door, it's all kinds of problematic. So they've hit me for 4 damage. Um. And that doesn't re I don't really care because I suffer no damage for the first one. So there we go. And they're going to move forward. And they're just going to sort of buff themselves up. What is it? Move forward and strengthen? Yeah, strengthen means they gain advantage on their next attack, I believe. Yeah, I think so. So we're going to we're gonna jump here. We're going to jump really, really far. I could pop the next door. No, I can't pop the next door. But I'm going to go over to here. You see that little uh, stutter there? It seems to happen quite a bit. And let's recover all of my lost cards and confirm the action, which means we should be okay for next turn. Oh, I'll also empower darkness, I think that is. And the Spellweaver's turn. And spend over turn. There we go. And then end the round. And what I'm going to do is do a short rest. So we randomly discard one of these cards. And then we... Uh, hmm, I really want that card. We randomly discard a card. Um... Or we can, say, redraw, take a point of damage to myself with the current health being on a low. I don't want to do that. I'll just have to burn that card. And then we get all of these back. So... Is there anything we can do to stop all of these? Um... Well, we probably could... We're probably best on taking care of this fella um, I actually believe I should have long rested that would have been a better action for me oh well we're gonna do a ranged attack and then we're gonna go for heal to self essentially uh, it says uh, range two, but you can use it on yourself and that'll be fine for this character uh, we are going to we are going to do the freezing Nova once again and then we will do um, no point in doing any loots or anything um, the bottom one and the top. No, there's nothing really that I could do. So I'm just going to place. I'm going to do ride the wind and just use it as a sort of dead action, essentially. So they're going to uh, shield one and poison uh, attack two poison. So they're not even going to move. Um, so that guy's just going to do his thing there and not move. Uh, the other person is going to do the same thing. Um, and that means getting through here is all kinds of problematic. Anyway, let's go for heal myself, like so. And then I will do attack three, range three. Chances are I'm not going to kill him because he's now got shield. I've rolled minus one. I've drawn minus one, so one point of damage is fairly pathetic anyway. Uh, we're going to go with this heal four, and that'll bring the uh, brute up to almost full health. We're on 11 there. And then we'll say loot, but I'm just going to... It doesn't really matter. I'll just I'll, I'll, I'll activate it anyway, but there's nothing to loot around. As loot one means all tiles around you by one, well, one hex. So, um, end the turn. Uh, they're round now. Let's see what they're going to do. Um, the problem is if I don't kill this guy, I really should have killed him. 
I was a massive misplay there. Um, what do I do? I could go back with Trample, but then, yeah, I don't know if we're going to. I don't know if we need to. Um... Or do I keep going forward? No, that's just that's going to compound the issue. We're going to go with Trample and then Provoking Raw. Um, we'll do that and hopefully kill this fella. For this person, I am going to probably do my action. I'll do my turn, actually. Um, I'm actually going to pop the door just to see what's in there. So I'm going to move four and then do Fire Orbs. And then what I'll do is I'll probably use Cloak of Invisibility and go Invisible. <laughs> so we'll end the selection there. So they're on 50, which is move to attack two. So hopefully there's, that person will get closer. So we'll continue there. So we're going to do this jump. We'll go one, two, three, four. So we're actually jumping back to... Oh, no, sorry. Uh, undo waypoint. So undo that one. So one, two, three, four. And we've went... Oh, well, there and then there. And that means that once we move that... See that? You get this little stutter. It's annoying, that. Uh, we'll confirm that. Uh, sk I'll skip the rest of the movement. Because we moved over them, uh, we do attack them. So let's do that. And there we go. They've been attacked. And then we'll attack them for another two, which is plus one, three damage. There we go. They've been absolutely skewered. Okay. End my brute's turn. This guy will go forward. And now I will do move four. We will pop that door. And we can see we have some archers here. I'm going to move right far, well, right to the front. Um, is this last room? I think it is. Uh, and then I will go for um, I will go for this here, which is attack three, range three, target three. And I will target... Oh, I'm going to skip the rest of the movement. I will go for one, two, and then three. And then confirm those targets. And we've got only two damage on that first one. But we've got four damage on that one to kill it. And then we've got times two on that one to kill it as well. Perfect. That was absolutely perfect. I'm going to use Cloak of Invisibility, which doesn't mean you can't attack or anything like that. It just means that you're classed essentially like as an obstacle. So they will have to go around. That's one thing as well. When you press tab, it does show you the... Uh, the traps but these are obstacles here it should I believe show you like the outline of them where you can and can't go I mean it's fairly obvious for that that you definitely can't go through it and the urn's quite big as well but it would be nice to show you that same as for this chest over here it would be nice to um like have those highlighted when you turn on the overlay anyway end the spell weaver's turn and it is their go because we pop this door here um uh, essentially these have uh, sort of drawn their, um, they get drawn and they do their action, but because they, they can't see there, they're not going to do anything. So, um, what I'm going to do is leave the spell weaver for that person in there, and for this guy, I'm going to uh, run forward and hit him uh, as much as I can, so I'm going to do that, um, and then for the spell weaver, I'm going to do a short rest, which is perform a short rest, uh, get rid of flame strike. yeah, that is perfectly fine, and then we're going to go probably with um, something really, really damaging, um, what do we want to do? Loot one, no. Attack two, range three. That would be perfectly acceptable. And then move to get ourselves into that. One, two, three, four. No, we'd have to go one, two, three. But that's all right. We don't need to worry too much about that one. So they're on uh, 56, attack one, range three, target two. And the guard is on move one, attack four. So for me, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to power this with the... Uh, the bit of the element was left there and let's see if we can kill them we've got plus one so that's four damage they are now dead one two three four now we can go around which is good uh, uh oh no we can't go around oh yeah because that's blocked so we're gonna have to go through this trap which is a bit of a shame uh but we're gonna keep walking through and we'll stand on this chest and then we will uh confirm that move i'll skip the rest of the movement end their turn and then let's see what we picked up we've got 10 gold there we are okay so for this person i'm gonna go over to there i will then skip the movement i will use attack six and pretty much clean this guy out oh, we've only hit for five what a shame and uh, end that turn and there we go that is end of round and should be the end of the level so you can see the gold we've acquired the enemies killed that sort of thing and now we'll be able to see hopefully uh, oh, we can. We need to go there. So this is the Iron Drake, and we will travel to that, and then we might gain some experience for doing all of this. Let's see. Um, there we go. Our journey is complete. So it shows you overall uh, what we've accomplished and what we've done. We'll enter the village. We've gained some gold, gained some experience, and also a major healing portion. Excellent. Okay. So um, uh, items now lose durability. This is something that is not in the board game, and I'm hoping will not be in the campaign. Although I'm. 
Uh, as far as I'm aware, the campaign and the co-op stuff, that's going to be a straight copy of the board game, whereas this mode is like slightly different in a couple of ways. Things like this, you have a durability on items, so they lose durability once you complete journeys. So for example, this one here has durability of unlimited, you can see that sort of infinity sign there, uh, and that's same as the boots, but this one only has a certain limited uh, durability and such. Anyway, we have leveled up, so I will uh, have a click on the brute, and we'll say, um, oh, I'll click on level up. So we have three options to pick from. We've got uh, skill Duo, Juggernaut, and Wall of Doom. Retaliate and Shield Self is really good. Uh, last for that turn, we'll burn it. I'm going to pick Juggernaut because it's move 2 and attack 2 on the top. That is really, really good with a good initiative as well. Uh, add plus 1 to attacks for all of your attacks this round. Uh, yeah, that's just this round. I'm going to go with Juggernaut, and then um, there you are. So, um, has it been picked? Um... There we are, yeah. So we need to uh, we need to remove a card from this deck and put Juggernaut in. I'm putting Juggernaut in. Uh, we're just going to go down to see what I don't want. Um, that one I don't tend to use, but move four is really good. I don't use it for the looting, and I don't uh, use it for the initiative because the initiative's terrible. Um, I think we're going to get rid of grab and go. And there we go. Right. Um, so we've got the Iron Drake Army. There is a little sort of thing we can go for here so we can actually buy stuff. So we've got a Hawk Helm. Um, during your range attack, add plus one to the range. Or Mask of Terror. During your melee attack, add push. Um, that's actually not too bad at all. Um, I'm probably going to get both of these, I think. Yes, I will. Ah, actually, do we need to make sure we've selected the right character? Yes. So we'll say Hawk Helm on that one. Yes. And, oh no, it looks like we just buy it. Uh, so we'll say that one, we'll say Helm, and then for the Brute, we're going to go with the uh, Mask of Terror. And that is a tap ability. Um, oh no, it's not, it's just during your melee attack. And melee attacks gain push one. And there we go, we've got some stuff there. Right, and we'll exit the shop and leave the curse keep. And we see now we have more options to do whatever we need to do. So move along and we're eventually going to try and get to there, but we need to sort of level up and do all of that sort of thing. But anyway, that is your basic moment to moment of what is currently in Gloomhaven. That has been the uh, a little look anyway at uh, the, I was going to say adventure mode. Yeah, adventure mode. Um, you can call it random modes, whatever. Um, as I mentioned, you can change the party. They all have different stuff. So I'll go off to say um, Swift Scars. Um, actually, no. Let's change it to say uh, Venom, uh, Venom Stone. You can see they've got, they've got Scoundrel and the uh, Craghart there, and they've got all these uh, different abilities and stuff. So, um, overall, then. Um, I think it's going to be disappointing for anybody that wanted to play, well, certainly play the campaign or any version of basically the board game on PC. If you're wanting that, this isn't for you at the moment. It is planned. However, the roadmap shows it to be a quite a while and quite a long way away. Multiplayer and modding and the campaign will eventually be added. I do think not having a tutorial at the release is a bit of a misstep. I thought I think that would benefit certainly newer players. Any veterans, you're probably going to get away with it okay. Um, the actual moment to moment is solid i think it's it's um it looks decent sounds decent uh, the effects quite nice lighting's good the um the game does play pretty much like the board game as far as i can tell in all respects um the the downside i think is that the visibility could be improved in, in, in a couple of ways which i've mentioned so things like uh, showing you what cards have been drawn for the attack a bit better having an event log would be a, a massive boon i think that would be a really good thing so you can check back and see what's happened and why um and just tweaks and changes there but that's all sort of there's no deal breakers in that i don't think it's just something that's uh, sort of an early access and hopefully will be improved as the, as the game sort of progresses on that little sort of micro stutter as well but just things like that, little niggles, um, but at this stage, this uh, this mode is definitely playable and quite enjoyable. Um, in terms of, like say, the the campaign, that's where I would really sink a lot of time in, time and uh, effort into that, and like I said, the multiplayer playing with friends, uh, you know, unlocking different characters and doing all of the, I think there's like 99 story missions, pl well, I think there's actually... I think technically there's like 50 story missions and then you've got like another side missions which is the afterwards either 49 and then you've also got random scenarios and the actual board game is a huge sprawling uh, <laughs> epic thing uh, and hopefully this will uh, follow suit but at the moment not so much but uh, like I say it is early on but um, if you like what you see then by all means you can check it out yourself. Um, overall I'm um, quite enjoying it and I will be playing some more but um, I will be sinking more time into the campaign when that comes. Um, if you like what you see then by all means check the game out yourself hope you have enjoyed the video and hopefully it's been useful to yourself thanks very much for watching take care and generic partings